everyone. Nice to meet you. Uh, hello, everyone behind your screen in the world. And hi, man. I know you're watching me. Um, I want first to apologize about my English because uh, I come from a, a country where the accent is very sexy. And uh, I learned English with TV shows, so basically, uh, Khaleesi is back to Westeros. Sorry. First of all, uh, I want to thank a lot, Maxon, for this opportunity. Uh, I'm really glad to be here to tell you how much I love to work with Cinema 4D in my process as a concept artist, uh, and how much time this software saved my ass. Well, my name is Bastien Grivet. I am concept artist and art director. And I come from a small country called Switzerland in Geneva, more precisely. And uh, I grew up there, and then 10 years ago, I moved in Montpellier, south of France, where it's sun every day, no, you hate me, for my first job in the video game industry. There I became concept artist at Ubisoft first, then in a studio in Paris, back to Ubisoft three years later, and then I was hired by different studios around the world, and finally with my wife, Jessica Rossier, Bye. Uh, we co-founded a visual development studio, World and Light Studio. Here we started to have some fun. We had the chance to work on Call of Duty Black Ops 3. Black, yeah, Black Ops 3. It was a huge job. And uh, after that, we became best friend forever with Blur Studio. And we had the huge pleasure to work on big game cinematics such as uh, Lost Scroll Online. Halo Wars, ah no, not Halo Wars, uh, Angel Stone Cinematics, sorry, Halo Wars 2, <laughs> and the upcoming Shadow of War. And more recently, we worked with one of the best art team in the world on a project for Sony Pictures Animation. So to be short, we had a lot of fun with a lot of clients around the world. But working for clients is nice, uh, but what we love the most is create our own worlds and stories. Here is some example of my personal stuff. Um, a lot of sci-fi stuff. I started those one all on Cinema 40. I do fan art. This is not Star Trek. <laughs> OK, sci-fi again. This is painting, because I love to paint also. And I love orange colors. OK. Well, I call this conference a beautiful accident. It's for a good reason. Don't worry, I won't show you my last bad experience with my motorcycle, no. Uh, I will tell you how Cinema 4D helped me to build a special creative process for creating amazing things for video game industry. Let's go back 12 years ago. I was very young. And this is me on my motorcycle, by the way. Uh, my goal was to be the next guy to create or animate the T-Rex on the new Jurassic Park. Woo. Or at least have a really nice and beautiful artwork. So I studied in an art school in Geneva. Woo. And here I was supposed to learn really important things, such perspective, colors, light, painting. But <laughs> it wasn't a good school at all. So it barely never happened. Uh, so I had to find my own shortcuts. And for that, I needed the help from 3D softwares, like Cinema 40, Photoshop, uh, Photo Reference, Photoshop Tools. Uh, not for cheating, but for having a nice results for sharing my ideas and stories quickly. Today, I know how to paint, even with oil painting. But uh, back then, it was a huge mess. Uh, I was supposed to build a, a process and have confidence with it. But when you are still searching yourself as an artist, it doesn't happen for a long, long time. And that was it at this time, 12, 12 years ago, where I discovered Cinema 4D. It was uh, Cinema 4D release 8, a good old friend. And it was the only software in school with an almost serious course, uh, one morning per week. So it was one of the first crap I did with it. I was really proud at this time. Yeah. 
Um, is there any 3D, 3D artist here? No? Good. Oh, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> because uh, if I have to represent my experience as an artist on Cinema 4D, it's pretty much like this. Yeah, uh, or you can imagine a toddler in a jumbo jet cockpit, if you prefer. If something is glowing, I push it and see if something good happens. <laughs> That's basically my process. So, um, and Cinema 4D is really awesome for that because the user interface is so friendly that even a dumbass like me was able to handle it quickly and have, an, have a pretty nice result with almost zero knowledge. And then my life changed with a new toy, MoGraph. Yep. And it was my face uh, when this little friend here became those. And then a miracle in Cima 4D MoGraph, the random effector. And finally, everything gone crazy. I knew at this time that my creative process had the kick in the ass he needed so badly. Really, really. A little example. Uh, this picture was in the quick start guide of Cinema 4D for a long time. Thank you, Maxon. Very proud. Uh, all this scene was born from a simple cube. And with the help of MoGraph and his legendary random effector and all those few things, uh, it helped me to build a huge building mass in the background of my main scene without having to draw it or lose uh, a lot of time with tons of details. And then, after a quick texturing process, I will show you how I texturing in a few minutes, I import my render in Photoshop and start to work on the sky, the little details, the lights, colors, and the storytelling with this car crashed in the foreground. What a beautiful... Accident, isn't it? So let's go back with Blur Studio. Um, I brought a little video in order to show you what we did for them. Uh, let's go. Ready. moment my program is reactivated and I am handing over command of all global field operations to you.
Thank you for them. <clears throat> That's why I really love my job, <laughs> really. And uh, our job as concept artist and illustrator is to be at the first step in the project. How does it work? Uh, when we have this famous call from Blur, it's basically like this. We have Frank at the phone. It's in, in, he tells us, OK, guys. How are you? Uh, we have some stuff to do for our new project about Lord of the Rings. We, have to, uh, we need to have Sauron at the top of his tower, summoning almost 30,000 creatures. And you have five days in order to do that. OK, guys, kiss, bye. <laughs> and we are like, we are so fucked. <laughs> but that's where Cinema 40 is really great for that, because uh, I brought you an another example uh, for the uh, Angel Stone cinematic. We don't have time to spend too much time with drawing things uh, nowadays. Because when you have f five days in order to accomplish a huge illustration, you have to be cli really quick. So it starts always like this. We're doing a, a really quick mock-up on Cinema 4D using MoGraph for all the repetition. Uh, on this project, it was about a huge cathedral uh, with, with a huge background, with this monster in the background, with a badass girl in the foreground who's going to kick his ass. And uh, we started to, to develop some other stuff. And uh, for that, when we started to play with that, uh, we received a Skype call from Blur. And we're sharing our screen with Cinema 4D. And they can shoot with us in the same time in almost one hour the best shot. And it's really, really quick. You don't have to draw things like before. You don't have to spend too much time. And we are in France. The studio is in France. They are in LA. So the jet lag is really, really, really hard to handle. So everything must be really quick. Thanks to Cinema 40. <laughs> uh, this is one of the first render. And here another one, because they wanted another version with a better angle. And here is the final result.
Thank you for them, for us. It's great. Well, in one morning, <laughs> not so difficult, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, there was a lot of people behind this, of course, of great people. Blur, we are really proud to work with them for six years now. We really love them. And uh, a last thing I want to show you was your work on Call of Duty Black Ops 3. At the beginning of the game, you are in a cold, futuristic version of uh, Zurich. And we were in charge of designing and imagining all, all a big augmented city uh, with big buildings, structures, and tons of other shit. Uh, our mission was to imagine all the big locations of the game, but uh, this one was the first. And you know what? More graph was there. Oh, yeah. Uh, my first influence when I have to think of a tall, futuristic building was Zaha Hadid, the Iraqi and world-famous architect who sadly passed away recently. Um, I loved so much her work, the way she played with shapes in the most gracious way, an incredible tribute to mathematics and nature. And she had a huge impact on my way of designing buildings. So with the help of MoGraph and my imagination, uh, I designed those structures. It took me almost one morning to generate this and have the perfect style I wanted. <coughs> and the, pre the, the rest of uh, the thing is pretty much the, the same. This is the final result. And they loved it. They loved it so much uh, that you can literally see them in the game. They optimized my model to put it right in the game. Yup, they don't have more graph at Activision yet. And the process was pretty much the same for the rest of the mission on Call of Duty. Here is some other views for the futuristic Cairo. All done on Cinema 40 and uh, some details and effects on Photoshop. And another one. Okay. Now it's time for a demo. Woo. Let me show you how to master chaos. Uh, I must warn you, I have no idea of what I will do. It's purely 10 years of process and automatic cerebral mechanism who will make up something from random parameters. Sounds like a course in Hogwarts, right? Okay, so let's do this. This is Cinema 4D 19th, so the last version. But uh, I'm not gonna use all the pretty cool s new stuff of this release because, as I said, <laughs> I am a really basic man. <laughs> if it's glowing, I push it. So I have to learn a lot more. Uh, what can we do first? Uh, structure, sci-fi structure. So let's start with a simple cube. It's a really nice cube. Wow. I'm covered it in object. And I'll add some, some details, not so complex details, but just a few ones. Like this, OK, some extrusions here. OK. A little antenna here. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing, really. <laughs> it's pretty fun. That's why I love Cinema 4D. You have no inspiration. It's like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> take my home. <laughs> okay, like this, like this. Okay. This is an interesting shape, isn't it? Wow. And now let's do some magic. I'm using MoGraph cloner here. I just drag the cube in the cloner. Bam. Let me show you better with a little bit of space. OK. Now we have the first repetition. But I, I'm going to switch the mode for the grid array. So we have a sort of square uh, cube of repetition. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. What? Oh, OK. Da, da, da. I'm going to give some space again. OK. 
just have the thunder one. OK, we have this. I'm going to just add more shapes. I'm just increasing those simple parameters here. And then I'm going to Effector, Menu, and choose Random. And this is my favorite effector, of course. Because now everything is messed up. And here in the parameters, you can choose to have a random position on all the axes. But I'm not going to use it much. OK, like this. I don't know. But the scale, the scale parameters are really, really nice. Because here I can add some pretty good variations. Hey, hey. Starting to look it's fun. OK. I'm going somewhere. Then I copy past my first cloner, merging everything. Um, I'm merging always all my stuff. I, uh, I have a really, really destructive process. It's not a good one, <laughs> but it works for me. <laughs> so sometimes I'm, I'm stuck. But it, it's a part of the process. I'm an artist. I love to run naked on the beach. Okay. Uh, pop, 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 pop. Merging everything here. OK, connect. And I'm going to play a little bit more. I'm going to squeeze, copy past again, squeeze. Rotation. Looks pretty much like the Death Star, right? We can add an X-Win. <laughs> OK, merging my first cloner too. OK. I'm going to rotate it in order to see what is going on. Oh, that's nice. Because now the antenna are now uh, some bridges, I guess. So it's good. It's good for what I want to do. OK. Playing again, like that. So here we're starting to have something really useful for designing a sci-fi structure. It took me almost, I don't know, a few clicks. So as I said, when you have to do something really quickly for a client, this works perfectly. Let's do this with a big building in the center. OK, uh, when I have this, did that, this first mock-up, uh, I can add my camera. And here I can have the client on the phone, or with Skype. It's better with Skype. And we choose together the good angle with the with right composition. And the camera in Cinema 4D has, are really, really nice, because you, you can do everything you want really, really quickly. Time is money, so basically you have to do everything quickly because you have to sleep. It's important. If you don't sleep, you die. Trust me. I'm an artist. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Let's add some more stuff here. Ooh, sounds nice. OK. Now I have all of my shapes in place. And I am a really uh, lazy guy. So I don't want, I, I know some artists who are really comfortable to have just this result and paint over it, texturing it in Photoshop and stuff like that. I'm not like that. I want to have everything really quickly. So I adding some lights with the physical sky, which is also a really nice tool in, in Cinema 4D. Because in the parameters, you can choose the time, the time and the location. You can choose the month of the year, uh, even the country where you, you want your uh, scene. And of course, the hour of the day. That's so nice. OK, great. I have something like that. Golden hour is always the best. And if I'm doing a quick render with a global illumination, uh, uh, yeah, it's nice. For me, it's nice. Let's add some texture. 
OK. Uh, for my texturing process, uh, I'm doing master class in South of France. And uh, all my students are like, uh, how do you use UVs in your model 3D uh, and stuff? I'm like, UVs? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> no, no. I, I know what is UVs, but I don't use them for my process. Again, I'm not again, you, a guy you can trust completely. So I designed some huge textures, some huge images with a lot of details. I took almost uh, hundreds of photo references with buildings, concrete, and all those funny stuff, and uh, I did this huge texture. So I can use it for my quick process. Uh, yes. OK. And I'm going to do something. Sorry, 3D artist guy. I'm really sorry. I'm going to do a stuff really scary. I'm going to add it in the bump, because I want more bump. I don't have a bump map, so I'm, I'm taking the same picture. Sorry, I'm so sorry. And, <laughs> and just after that, drag and drop on my stuff. And it almost works. OK. Because I have to do one last thing. Because this is the, okay, this is the UV projection. And as I said, I, I don't want to use that. It's too complicated for my head. So I'm using the cubic projection, I'm starting to play again with the parameters. Don't size the things like that. OK. I'm checking here. And I think it's pretty nice. We have all those small windows here. And let's see what is going on. Yeah. OK. No, I can work. And it's work. I can send this to the clients. Really. But they are really cool. But I, I can send this to the client, and they have a, a very good um, uh, example of what the final scene will look. So OK, that was for the city. Uh, I did, one day, I, I, take the, I took the time to, uh, to create a sort of, how to call that, a gold mine. This is, uh, I call that a gold mine because when I have no inspiration, and it happened a lot of times as an artist. Uh, I needed some help. I needed a quick file with everything in it in order to put my camera in it and just do what I want. And I did this with MoGraph and uh, also a cool stuff called CityKit, if I remember well. But if a client called me, uh, recently I used it for Dell because they needed uh, a pretty awesome picture for a, a new screen from Alienware. And they were like, OK, uh, can you do, please, uh, a big uh, spaceship battle in, the city, in a city, uh, really futuristic, OK? And again, you have four days. <laughs> Cheers, bye. Oh, crap. And uh, <laughs> Cinema 40 was here. And I used the, this view and just had to put my camera somewhere. I guess it was right here. And yeah, I, I, I like this view. can do this view. This is an artwork here. Or I can go here. This is a pretty big model. OK. And I can do this. Here is another artwork. And I can, I can use it tons of times. And it works. It's a perfect. <laughs> so yeah. But this process is for clients, or when I don't want to spend some time on small details. Right now, uh, after almost 12 years in this industry, and um, after I uh, have working with some really nice guys, such Alberto Mielgo, I really learned to paint everything. So I don't use it often, but it's always, always a very good help. So let's do another stuff. Buildings. Let's do a building for Dubai. So here again, my little cube. 
Uh, I'm going to do a futuristic building really quickly. So I have to show all the lines here. I will need to add some segments. So i increasing the number of segments here in the parameter of the, of the cube. OK, nice. Object mode here. I switch to the up view points. And here is another very good tool in Cinema 4D, is a brush. If I right click, brush. And you can use it like this. It's really nice when you want to do uh, some natural shapes like rocks or, or a complex building with a futuristic look. I'm not an architect at all, but with time you know how to, to, uh, to play with shapes. It's really important. It's a, all, it's a big part of design. OK, great. I have a good base for my building here. OK, let's go back here. Let's squeeze it in order to have just the first floor. Nice. Face mode. And I'm going to select only the, um, the corner, you know, the, the loop section here. A little bit of extrude. Great. It's the only complicated, complicated part, seriously, because I, I had to put some details. Oh, what? Da, 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 da. Okay, looks nice. Looks pretty nice. Let's go back with more graph cloner. Let's drag the cube in my cloner, right? Object. No, I'm going to use a linear mode because it's a building, so it's only on the vertical um, axis. Okay. And then, whoo! Oh. Building! Ta da! But <laughs> it's not the end. Because now, I, in the parameters of the cloner, I can play with the rotation. Doing stuff like this. No, it's a futuristic building. And I can even modify the, the size. Oh, no, no, it's not the good one, sorry. Uh, yeah. Ah, it, it's because I, I was upside down, sorry. <laughs> OK, like this. Not like this, like this. OK. Uh, this is basically how I did the, almost all the buildings for Call of Duty. It took me a few clicks. It's really, really, really easy. And thanks to Maxon for that, keys guys. And, um, but OK, doing buildings is fun. But with that, I can do something else, a complete new alien environment. Yes, sure. It's merging everything again. I'm sorry. OK. Let's go back in the points mode, no, in the face mode, maybe. And let's play a little bit with the brush tool again. Up, select everything. I increase the radius in order to have a bigger brush. and. Let's see what's going on here. OK. Wow. This is a very good shape in order to start a completely new, a complete new world for, a, I don't know, production, of sci-fi production of things. And I'm going to use MoGraph again with a cloner, put it inside, the grid array. 
And let's play again with my favorite effector, the random effector. Let's take some space here. And, and again, let's play with scale. I don't know what I'm doing, OK? But it looks cool, so I don't care. OK, that's very really nice. Wow. And now I have a really complex shape. It's like seeing, you know, uh, a rock, rocky shape from a, a very far species. Uh, <coughs> copy that here again because I want to have a very nice composition. Yeah, that's, that looks pretty nice. Okay. Oh, yeah. This is so fun to use. As a 2D artist, it's really, 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 really amazing to use. Uh, <laughs> oh, that looks nice. Yes, I have a good composition here. I'm going to merge everything again. Sorry, 3D artist. <laughs> Everybody going to hate me. <laughs> OK. Here, let's add some physical light and sky. Let's play with light or add some colors here. OK. Let's see what's going on. Ooh. OK, too much stuff. <laughs> the light cannot passing through. So let's, what the, let's choose another angle here. Oh, oh, nice. This looks nice. Let's add a camera in order to increase the sensor size, like this, yeah, oh yeah, this is nice. Okay, now it should work, yeah. Great. And this is great because uh, I can send this to the clients. He has all the information he needs for the shot. I mean, in terms of composition and light. No, I have to work a lot more in Photoshop in order to add, to add texture, details, spaceship, of course, or I don't know what. But uh, yeah, this is basically the process I have with Cinema 4D and MoGraph in order to create uh, environments for big productions. Another example, very quick. Uh, this is what I did this morning in my hotel room. It was really quick to do, but it's the same process. Um, let's look what's going on. Yeah, and here I have everything I need, as I said. It was done this morning in my hotel room, really. It was really, really quick. So that's why I love Cinema 4D. It's for MoGraph and uh, all the tools they have. And it's really easy to use as a 2D artist. And as, I, as you may know, 2D artists are, no, I am a really simple guy. I don't want to offend other 2D artists. <laughs> I am a simple guy. So I need to have everything quickly with a, with a really friendly uh, user interface. That's why I never started to work on other software. <laughs> I won't say any names. OK. Great. 
So uh, for me, Cinema 4D is a tool, a very, very important tool in my process uh, professionally. And it's like a hammer, if I have to compare to a tool. Uh, you can plant in an air with a hammer, but with this hammer, uh, for artists like me, it's, uh, it really helped me to cross all the limits of my own imaginations. So thank you very much, Maxon, for, uh, for this. And uh, I'm really glad to, to work with this software. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, this was my demo. Thank you very much for your attention. And uh, now if you have any questions, I'm here for you. And uh, if, you are inter if you are interested to see what we do, you can go on this website or contact me uh, on this email address. Thank you very much, everybody.